Once upon an island in the 1500s lived the genius who had a pet elk. He also had a prophetic dwarf and loved math, but he had a penchant for fighting. This is what got him in trouble. Ultimately, it cost him his one and only nose. This is the story of how it happened. Say hello to Tycho Brahe, astronomer extraordinaire. His name might remind you of a toy brand or a woman's undergarment, but he was actually a Dane in a time before Danishes were popular. If you happen to know some astronomy or you're a Danish vampire who's been alive for centuries, you might have heard of Tycho. Born into a noble family, he was destined for great things, one way or another. But he happened to get kidnapped Bro. by an uncle named Jorgen. Get in the car. Uncle Jorgen raised him in a castle on a private island. Luckily, the uncle turned out not so creepy. He was basically the nobleman benefactor, do-gooder type who had lots of money. Uncle Kidnap, I mean, Uncle Jorgen huh? sent Tycho off to study law at the University of Copenhagen. Tycho was only 13, so he probably had a bit of an identity crisis. After a short time, young Tycho realized he didn't like law so much. Maybe like me, he'd rather be picking his nose with a rusty steak knife or flossing his teeth with a bit of barbed wire. So you'll forgive the guy for gravitating towards something else. That something else turned out to be astronomy. I guess he couldn't escape the gravity of it. He started to look at all the star charts and mapped out the heavens with some pretty rudimentary instruments, bringing to them his unique Brahe brand of precision, which was remarkable given that he didn't have a telescope. In his pursuit of all things heavenly, poor Tycho was flabbergasted and perturbed by Copernicus's heliocentric theory, which held that the sun, not the earth, was the center of the universe. At around this time, Brahe also discovered a supernova known as SN1572, or Tycho's Nova, in the constellation Cassiopeia. This was an astonishing finding because it called into question the Aristotelian view that the realm of the stars was fixed, static, and unchanging. If this realm was in fact fixed, like a stellar backdrop for the solar system, why then did a star appear out of nowhere? The answer, of course, is that the stars were unfixed, dynamic, and constantly changing. After this discovery, Brahe went on to publish his observations before taking a brief sabbatical side tour through the countryside. He tried his hand at painting and led a quasi-pastoral existence, during which he hobnobbed with the local people and ended up getting hitched to a peasant woman named Kirsten. Howdy. Since Brahe was of noble birth, the marriage was scandalous. <gasps> Brahe and his bride deftly sidestepped this problem through a concept called morganatic marriage, in which people of unequal status can be joined in matrimony with the proviso that the commoner and any offspring arising from said marriage would not receive any titles, rights, rank, power, property, elks, dwarves, prosthetics, privileges, expressed or implied. In other words, you get nothing. Sometime after this, Brahe went on to do what any nobleman's spouse of a commoner would do. He built a castle and became a feudal lord, since he was financed by King Frederick II and owned roughly 1% of Denmark's wealth. He created his own paper mill, printing press, pawn, and canal system. If you ever came over for board game night, you had to watch your feet or you might step Arch. on the clairvoyant dwarf who stayed under the table. His main job was to entertain his guests and foretell the future. If you weren't stepping on dwarves, you might bump into Brahe's Bro. pet elk. Sadly, the hapless thing got lent out to entertain a friend at a dinner party. After drinking too much beer, the creature got inebriated. It then stumbled down some stairs, breaking its neck. Bro. All this craziness was pretty sane compared to what happened on December 29, 1556. Apparently, the lead-up to the event was a drunken exchange between Brahe and his third cousin, Mandarup Parsberg, at an engagement soiree some two weeks before. The two nerds argued back and forth over who was better at mathematics and decided to settle the debate like intelligent noblemen. They decided to duel with swords in the dark. Only men of astronomical intellect would think of doing something like this. So if you like to smell things and need something for your glasses to perch on, don't try this at home. By the end of the night, Tycho lost the bridge of his nose and sustained a laceration across his forehead. 
Evidently, since his cousin won the duel, he was also the superior mathematician. You know, I guess you have to be good at math to calculate the arc of your sword stroke to just cut off someone's nose and not his face. Funny how these things work. Remember, brawn always proves brain. But as they say, time heals all wounds. Unfortunately, it doesn't regrow your nose. But at least Tycho and his cousin reconciled, and Tycho was the recipient of a prosthetic nose, which many contemporaries thought was made of silver or gold. Actually, a posthumous analysis determined it was most likely brass, or perhaps copper. Heck, maybe it was made of kryptonite, infinity stones, adamantium, or mithril, or recycled diapers. Ew. Who knows? But whatever it was made of, imagine wearing something that forever reminded everyone of how dumb you were. Brahe, though, somehow failed to learn his lesson. He grew into a pompous, hard-drinking, hot-headed aristocrat who once accused Nicholas Rimeris, a fellow astronomer and one-time dinner guest, of plagiarism, and of all things, having a long nose. Rimeris rejoined appropriately that this was ironic since Brahe didn't have a nose and was probably jealous that Rimeris was better endowed in this regard. These very mature epithets got hurled back and forth until Rimeris ended the quarrel by dying. Perhaps Tycho was able to partly make up for his indiscretions by advancing astronomy significantly, not least of which by mentoring a brilliant young student named Johannes Kepler, who founded the laws of planetary motion and set the stage for some other random chap named Isaac Newton, whoever he was. Not to die without some bizarre legacy, Brahe was rumored to have been poisoned by none other than his apprentice, Kepler. There was a rumor that the young Kepler aspired to murder Tycho and replace him as the imperial mathematician and to gain access to Tycho's meticulously collected data. Brahe's body was actually disinterred at least two times in 1901 and again in 2010. Lab analysis of his hair revealed large quantities of gold and mercury. But whether he died because his bladder exploded, Kepler poisoned him, or one of his alchemy experiments went awry, may never be known. What's certain is that Brahe will be forever memorialized in the poem, The Old Astronomer by Sarah Williams. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too truly to be fearful of the night. That is, unless Tycho's third cousin happens to be around. <laughs>